Hi everyone, thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, Roots Garage to stand here. Thanks for all artists coming out today. Thanks to the organization. We are uh, Dries and Andreas from Beldup. And we're here together today with Raste Rigat, with Creation Rebel Sound System, and with Jan from the legendary pioneering original sound from Bimber. I am Jutz. Jan doesn't like me beating him up, but uh, I'm still going to do it anyway. Hey guys, uh, how are you doing? And uh, Terry, first question maybe for you. Uh, how is Belgium treating you? Uh, have you been here many times already? Yes, I'm West Terry again. Yes, from Creation World Song, my charter. Yes, we should have seen. Yeah, I've been to um, Belgium enough times over the past 15 years. I came here in 2009. David Tudor and Root Vibration Sound to play on Iron Newt's song. Iron Newt, yes, 2009. Yes, I'm Tudor, Tudor Lion from Creation Rebel. Thanks for having us here. We got some Fruits Garage. Um, so, yeah, just a little bit about us. Uh, we start, oh, I started as a boxman for Channel 1 when I was about 17 years old, so back in about 2008. Um, just very quickly uh, went from going to the first session at University of Dub. I remember very clearly Abashanti, John Tubby's and Channel One, and that blew me away um, back then. And, and I, I, I sort of never imagined being able to have the sound system for quite a long time. It's quite a big commitment in London, and uh, yeah, you know, you need a good team around you. Um, but eventually, after a, a long time collecting records, the time was we were out to put everything together. I um, was very fortunate enough to get some old boxes from Mikey. So I've still got Mikey's old four, uh, six face pins, which are older than myself. And uh, yeah, here we are today, five years with the sound. Um, best luck, Terry, for, for joining the journey. Yeah. And yeah, we're just getting started. Hello, I'm Jan from Eijenhut, Kasper from Eijenhut. Uh, we come from Limburg, uh, started in 99 and uh, still like to play sound, so here we are. For me it started uh, in the late 90s, more true because of him, because he was always listening to reggae music. He took me also to the first live gigs that I saw and that's how we love group just collecting records started you know digging deeper into that and i suppose just getting used to playing and getting your identity as a selector and having some music before you or before i thought to build the boxes for me that was the right way to go around a lot of people build a sound system and don't expect to start straight away and, and it all to just kick off but <clears throat> as well as the sound system you you know you have to know your music, you have to have understood what it is to get bookings, drive till 2 o'clock in the next afternoon, have a crew of people around you that get on and, and work together and all help each other, like those things are what you have to learn. And so I think some people, yeah, it's like that's what it taught me in the early days and that's what I was really, really useful to be part of such a big sound. So yeah, pass this one on. Then in 1985, after I came back to the road, um, reasoning, I said, no, let's build a more spiritual sound. I call it a more spiritual name. So I called it Jack Trinity. I called it that. I wrote to I said, yeah, let's, let's call it Jack Trinity. Power of the Holy Trinity. So since we, we played as Jack Trinity from 1985, it was strictly roots and dub music. We played no other music. No dancehall music, no Jonas music. Strictly roots music, so that's from 1985. We played all the, the big sounds, Chatobis six times, Chashaka six times, um, Arisha Steppers, Abashanti, uh, uh, Observer. Yeah, the selection, you have to know what you do. It's a serious role where you have to go watch the crowd for vibes to be a selector, a good selector. Yeah, here, here you have a, 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 
you can have a good strong community of people behind you that, that where a lot of people work together. In, in, in the UK for a long time there has or there was, perhaps Terry could talk about it a bit more, but maybe a slightly more competitive nature to the sound systems for quite a long time. Yeah. And maybe that's changed recently a little bit. But um, for sure that would have been, you know, very much a, a team on the side and, and kind of, you know, people sticking to their corner, which certainly gave it an element and an edge to the culture. Yeah. Um, and obviously the dub plate music and everything was, was uh, something that's influenced a lot with UK sound systems. And there's a slight, uh, maybe a slight different style of the music everywhere, you know. If you look at the UK style compared to the Jamaican style, it's very different. So every area of the country will have their own flavour or, or technique or taste to the music. For sure there are some subtle differences. Well, in the very beginning, I see it here in Belgium and in Europe a the lot. They face the speaker in Europe, I don't know why. But in, in England, you don't face the speaker. I noticed it in Europe, anywhere in Europe, a lot of the people, they, they love facing the speaker. They're it's all, a, it's uh, a bad habit. I don't know, I don't know why they do it in Europe, but they do it in Europe. In England, you don't do that. You face the DJ or the, the selector. Like this, huh? It changed in the last years because okay, now, but now it was different. I see a lot in Europe, I'm sure at night, but they all ran the speaker. Everybody's around the speaker, facing it. And if the speaker's talking to them, but it probably is talking to them. <laughs> I don't know, but they love to face the speaker in Europe. That's is one it, big difference. Is it maybe rude to do that in England? Pardon? Is it maybe rude to do that in England? Like, it was like I'm not sure if it's rude. It keeps the culture different in Europe than England. Why they want to face the speaker? In England, we don't face the speaker. Some might do it, but not like in Europe. So that's one thing. That I observed that the different face to speak here. In the 80s, there wasn't much one people doing reggae music. Jack Travis was one of the first, Keith. Jack Travis, he's a pioneer. He came from the 70s, and there wasn't many white people doing reggae. And David Dave Rundon, which you know Rundon, but as a signing man was Jack Travis. He kept it um, real from the beginning. And he's been here like, like 15 years now. So the, in the beginning, there wasn't many white people doing sounds, but Manasa came in the 80s, and you see more and more European sounds come. Then when the, the Shaka played at the Rocket, Hollywood Road, Nikki Culture Promotions puts, it's not just a black thing, it's a universal thing. That's for the students. And ever since then, a lot of mixed race and whites and European, they all came to the Rockets. And that's when, ever since the 90s, it's more whites than it's black a lot of times. It's good, it's very good. It's all changed now, it's all changed. So I've seen a big difference between the 70s, 80s, and now in 2023. It's all changed now, but it's still good, it's very good. They clashed more back then, more than now. They clashed, they did clash in the 80s. But now, it, it all clash now. On the flare, it says that like, Abishanti meets Channel 1 or so and so meets that sound. But in, back in the 80s, it was versus this sound versus that sound. So it was more of a like, competition back in the 80s. But now, not so much. It's meeting the soil of unity and identity. It's still good. So it's changed. The culture changed. See? Yeah. There was not so much happening in Belgium, so we. We drove all around the country when something was happening. Somewhere you really had to look how uh, this week we can go in Ghent if there is something or Brussels or Antwerp. So yeah, it, it grew in enormously, especially the last years. Uh, you can see it every week with the, the overview that you guys get. You, can, you have a choice between five or six dances. Every weekend, sometimes, sometimes yeah. even more. And for such a small country, uh, it's amazing to, to see how it grew. I think it's normal if you have more sounds, more people liking it, you will have more dances. Okay. There's a lot of and football matches. Yeah, there are. Indeed, there are a lot of football matches every week as well. So, um, mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. In the end, I think it's a good thing. Okay, maybe. 
some people sounds will be booked less, but I don't mind being booked less because there is so much happening. But yeah, I think people tend to travel less for, for a good session. Maybe because they're they have so much options. I think it's a bit normal. Like why would we drive to the the other side of the country if tomorrow we can have a nice dance here? Yeah. I think it's nothing more than that. Every country who plays sax is the Noah Bank Chachaka. He's known globally. As you know, like how Bob Marley was known, it's similar to Bob Marley in a way. To me, he is like that. Because everybody knew Chachaka. Africa, they pay tributes to him. China pay tributes. Japan, every country paid a tribute to Chachaka. That's how big he was globally. So respect to the shaka. But it's very good salutes for what he's done for the music. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's very similar, but yeah, he's still serious the way he talks and everything. But yeah, very approachable person. And I'm glad that I met him. Very glad. Great inspiration for all of us. How to be and how to live your life as a our DJ and selector and a sound man. Shaka was a legend. Great legend. Yes, good times. Well, obviously, Terry is, is, if you, yeah, so if you want to look at it as in um, the rest of the message and how we take it on as uh, people who are not strictly Rasta. So our sound systems are Rasta orientated, inspired, and culturally we are looking to imitate and also spread the message of Roots music and Rasta through what we do, but it's, it, it, it's um, Terry lives and breathes Rasta Farah. We're, I'm not trying to become a Rasta, and I suppose that is not something which anyone needs to be, I feel ashamed or that there needs to be any constriction. The sound system is for everyone, where, across whatever your belief and faiths are. However, the type of music we play and the type of people that we try to be are inspired by Rasta music and therefore in our selection and hopefully in our daily lives through a lot of the music that we play, we try to uphold what this is. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, yeah? A lot of Rasta Terry, chill out. He knows his music. A lot of Rasta people told me that Tudor is a very, he, he knows his music. He said, yes, he does. He might not have dreadlocks or Rasta, but yes, he knows his music. Respect Tudor. Yes, a lot of rest of folks, so he knows his culture and his music. Very good. So yeah, you can't watch the locks all the time. But yeah, I have locks, I have dreadlocks, and I want to get a film. I was young, and I still didn't have it. I give thanks. But yeah, there's a lot of cultural people who's not of dreadlocks, who's playing deep, spiritual, deep music. So I give thanks to the people who still keep the culture alive, yes? All right, first of all, yes. Thank you, Terry. Um, thank you all. Thanks all sound scatters here today. Thanks all people coming and listening. Uh, thank you all for your time. And I'm really looking forward for your selections. And I was glad to be able to share some words with you. Please, you still want to say something? OK, thank you, guys. Yeah, nice. all right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.